Father, we thank you so much for letting us be here to worship you. And we continue now to ask that your spirit come into this place, to touch the voices of each person singing, to touch the direction of the leader, to touch each of our lives. For we're here not to, to show ourselves, but to praise you. We honor you. And may what we take, what we hear, what we see, not only touch our lives, but give us even a greater desire to share that with others. What a wonderful gift you've given us. We want to share it with this world. We want to be with you throughout eternity. Bless all that is said and done. We pray in your son's name. Amen. It pleases me to let you know that the prayer was delivered by a gentleman who is my godchild, my son-in-law, and my church leader, Dr. Keith Wood. <laughs> I want you to know that in honor of Black History Week, we are singing a concert of Negro spirituals tonight. It is a wonder that these songs were created. They were created out of that slavery period. And I think the first thing that I should do is to differentiate between the Negro spiritual and the gospel song. Some people judge them all the same, but that is not so. The Negro spiritual comes out of the closed period of slavery. It was written by folk, by a group of people. Nobody knows who composed those songs by name. Whereas the, spirit, the, the uh, gospel song is co a composed piece of music. You know the songs that are written by Andre Crouch and Edwin Hawkins and other people. Those are composed pieces. And the minute that you see the composer's name, you know that it is not a Negro spiritual. It can be arranged by people who are living today, but there are no more spirituals to be created. They come out of the period of slavery. When um, our forefathers were brought here, their uh, slave masters saw to it that they learned something about Christ. Christ had not been their savior when they were in Africa. They didn't know about him. They had their ministers to preach to the slaves, or sometimes the slaves heard the sermons at an open window of a church. And that's how they learned the message of salvation. And they created these spirituals with biblical terms and spirituals about various characters in the Bible. They love the stories. That's what happened. I want you to know that I consider them to be rather geniuses. Though they were not educated in the language of this country, they had to learn the language, and listen at this. No two slaves who spoke the same dialect were assigned to the same plantation. That was done on purpose so that they would not communicate nor be able to stage any kind of insurrection or rebellion against their masters, which made it a sort of cruel kind of slavery. So the only way that they could learn this language was by imitation of their masters or of the people who oversaw them. And of course, what we have is a Negro dialect, which I very much respect in these spirituals. I try to teach my students who are standing behind me to say things in that way, to pronounce the dialect and to emphasize it, of course, I would like to say to all my brothers and sisters of, character, of color, I don't expect to hear you speaking it. <laughs> there is no excuse for you <laughs> in this day and age. But before we sing, I'd like to read you a portion of a poem 
a very lengthy poem that was written by James Weldon Johnson, the same man who wrote the words to the Negro National Anthem, lift every voice and sing. I'm going to read you his first four lines and then his last four lines. He wrote, O oh, black and unknown bards of long ago, how came your lips to touch the sacred fire? How in your darkness did you come to know the power and beauty of the minstrel's lyre? It, he ends this way. You sang far better than you knew. The songs that for your listeners' hungry hearts sufficed still live. But more than this to you belongs. You sang a race from wood and stone to Christ. Have you got good religion?
Here comes Sage and better run and hide. Oh, no, no,
I was uh, featured last weekend in Miami because of Black History Month, and folk looked at me in the places where I was and said, you don't look black. I said, you've never seen me with my clothes off, so you never know. You never know. You just never know. But I want to tell you that this, this music stirs this music stirs my soul, really. I just am so grateful. Let me just say to you folk, I'm so grateful that you choose the cathedral to come, and we are so thankful. And, uh, Alma and I worked together for a number of years in relationship with the cancer situation because she's a, a survivor, and, and so am I. And so there's a list. She gets the letter out every, uh, every month, and uh, I read it with, with great interest. But I, uh, uh, I asked her, I said, Alma, what are we taking the offering for tonight? And she says, for, uh, for us. Make the check to the cathedral and we will share it with whatever project that Alma has. And there are products that will be out in the, in the narthex. And remember, there are also products that they have. And whatever is made goes to such worthy cause I cannot tell you, because you've not been where I've been, how encouraging it is to share with a group of people who have gone through similar battles. And uh, it's just a real joy that we have tonight. And so go by and see what's there. And, if, and we're going to ask them permission to use some of it on our television ministry and programming, because this is tops. You know, I try to pick out voices, and they're so good, I see their mouths all working. It sounds like one person standing up here. Did you notice that? They're just great. So prepare yourself to give tonight. And while you're preparing, let me ask, how many of you are here tonight in the cathedral for the very first time? Will you do this a favor standing if you're here in the cathedral for the very first time? Anybody at all stand up? Yes, come on. Let's thank them for coming out tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Father, we thank you tonight for the spirit of giving that we can share together in what we consider to be causes that are worthy. Bless the giver tonight, and may its proceeds go to that cause that's of greatest need. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. Loves 
something else about my slave forebears. Maybe you've never thought about it, but I'm going to teach you something. When they came to this country, they brought their own scale. And I'm going to illustrate for you that the scale that they used didn't have but five notes in it. Now, they didn't have pianos over there, I'm sure. But those five notes that they had just happened to be the five black notes on this piano. <laughs> sort of fitting for the black race, don't you think? <laughs> now, I'm sure it was the pentatonic scale that was brought from, from ancient Greece. And those are both ancient civilizations, the African and the Greek. And that's what they used. Let me show you. We sang Great Day. I'm going to do a black key version for, version for it. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Thank you. 
little children, there's room for many a more. Steal away. Steal away. Are you convinced? <laughs> I could go on, I got a list, but I think you are convinced.
to me and by that time she had developed a most beautiful voice after her degree in music from Oakwood College she went to uh, get her master's degree at Indiana School of Music and uh, she's a marvelous singer under professional management she has sung she was a protege of Robert Shaw's and um, she has sung with him at our with an at, with our Atlanta Symphony uh, She's been there several times. And I would just like to have you uh, to meet her today, Janice Chandler, Ete May. After she does a spiritual con cantata by John Carter, we're gonna do a spiritual that Mervyn Warren wrote. Well, let me say, a composition that he wrote in the similitude of a spiritual. <laughs> because I told you in the beginning, you can't write one. It comes out of that closed period of slavery. But he wrote a fantastic one. You see, every year in Alabama, and let me insert that Alabama has more black colleges than any other state. And so they were organized into a consortium. And every year during Black History Month, we, the choirs sort of went up against each other singing spirituals. So. In Mervyn's senior year, he called me and said, I've written something for the festival. Well, I'd picked out something for the festival. I came back and tried mine and it wasn't that hot. And so I finally had to give in to Mervyn's composition and, and you're going to hear that. It ain't got, I, I ain't got long to be here. I'm bound for the promised land. Right now, Janice Chandler, ATMA. Accompanied by Brian Jones. I'm learning how to praise the Lord here. Um, just to lift up his name at all times. Sometimes, you know, you feel tired and you, you think, oh Lord, I don't know. If, uh, if I really know how to praise you, but we just have to allow the Lord to use us at all times. One of the things I love about Miss Blackman, when I was a little girl, I really idolized her when she was at DuPont Park as the Minister of Music. She was so tall and so larger than life. Everything she did was so beautiful. And um, I'm just so glad to be here today 
to be able to um, honor this tradition of singing. And she really did inspire me to go on into my, my life's work. And I've learned even on the symphony stage, even if I'm not necessarily singing directly about Jesus, that my heart can be open to heaven at all times. And um, so I'm gonna do that right now, even though this is a formally composed piece, it's kind of avant-garde. Um, just gonna praise the Lord.
Mervyn Warren has not had many birthdays because he was born in leap year. He's going to have one this month. <laughs> I remember so clearly one night, uh, you know, every four years. So when I was teaching me, you didn't have but one in that whole period of time. And his parents called and said, may we bring um, some refreshments to the AOLU rehearsal because that will be Mervyn's birthday. And, and his grandparents came walking in the room too. And Mervyn saw them. He didn't know they were coming. When he saw them, he just did like this. And then he quickly recovered. And we all had ice cream and cake and whatnot. And nice punch, you know, for students that night. It was so much fun. But I thought that since this is his year, and he won't have another one for four more years. How old are you, baby? Seven or eight? <laughs> I thought we could sing happy birthday to him. Do I have a piano? Let's all stand and serenade my boy. Let's go.
and shelter. My Lord's a mighty rock and shelter. Whom shall I fear? Hallelujah, my Lord's always near. Hallelujah. My Lord's a mighty rock and shelter. My Lord's a mighty rock and shelter. So long coming that it 
Worried my mind, I thought it was late, but was just on time.
On the mountain my Lord spoke, out of his mouth came fire and smoke. Looked all around me, it looked so fine, till I asked my Lord if all was mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Jordan River, it's chilly and cold. It chills the body, but not the soul. There ain't but one train upon this track. It runs to heaven and right back. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart,
men walked along on the road to Emmaus and they said, were not our hearts strangely warmed within us? I don't know about you, but my heart has been warm tonight. Thank you so much. You've come from all over the country to share with us. And uh, I just hope, I hope and pray that this will be an annual event for a long time because as long as we have it, Alma, we've got you. Again, let's express our love and our appreciation for the Aeolians. And finally, a very special warm hand clap for the one and the only Alma Blackman. <laughs>